Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Aquadam.net. Give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. Uh, you're left with the mess to clean up, having to deal with the insurance company, uh, not to mention the memories that are lost that you can never replace. Uh, to those who live in flood-prone and hurricane-prone areas, uh, which is just around the corner, prepare now. Hurricane season is right around the corner. Visit Aquadam.net to see how they can help you prepare to avoid flood damage this season and every season thereafter. An aqua dam can be another tool in your arsenal uh, to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. A coffer dam, using water to control water, that can protect your home, your business, your church, your neighborhood, like a dam, but without the beavers. Give aqua dam a call at 707-764-2119, 707-764-2119, or look them up online at aquadam.net. Uh, they're also on Facebook at Aquadam Inc., Or call or email them today. They can help you out. Give them a call. Uh, Tell them Opperman Report sent you. Opperman Report, that's 10% off the price to anyone who mentions the Opperman Report. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, sorry for that little delay there. I dropped the mouse. <laughs> I dropped the mouse on the floor. I don't know how to find it. Um, let's see. 
They can find me at Optimum Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting. Uh, through my website, emailreviewer.com. Let's see if I can. My headphones are kind of hot. Make sure I'm right there. Uh, and uh, if you like today's show, go to OptimumReport.com. That's where we have our members section where you can go there and find exclusive content and shows and stuff like that. And, you know, sign up, become a member, and help support the show. It's over 200 shows now. It's like 250 or something. It's crazy. Um, as always, our archives are free at Spreaker.com, you know. Uh, and if you're listening on YouTube or something like that or iHeartRadio, go to Spreaker.com and sign up over there. Listen over there because uh, uh, that way Spreaker is actually monetized. It's the only platform I have right now that's monetized except for the radio station uh, where we have content. New content Monday to Friday, uh, five nights a week, either 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. in California, KCAA, in Nevada, KSHP, in uh, Utah, KYAH, and in Florida, uh, WWPR. So great advertising rates. You can be on uh, AMFM radio five nights a week. Get a hold of me at uh, OppermanReport.com. I'll find you there. Or, uh, what the hell? Put up a lot of great content this week. Johnny Bedworm uh, came on our show. I've had him on about four times previously, and uh, he came back a fourth time here today. And um, played him earlier tonight. Now, Johnny Bedworm, the first show I did with him was about the Theresa May's father. We uncovered this fascinating information about Theresa May's father. Then we had him come back, and uh, he told us about uh, uh, Nicole Junkerman, who is this woman who wrote on Epstein's plane, and she invested in this software that now they're using for the social distancing. And it turns out that Epstein also made a donation to that software, too, as well. She has all kinds of uh, intelligence connections uh, with the Mossad and stuff like that. And when we did that first show, Jeremy Bedmore was the first person to talk about this woman. Um... She started hitting us with lawsuits all over the place, all over the world, trying to get our YouTube channel shut down, you know? And, uh, but, you know, it's still up in the United States. She, I, I think in the UK, too, it's still up there, too. We can't get that down. But every now and then, I'll get a letter from Denmark or Switzerland or Sweden saying there's a defamation claim uh, that's been removed. I uh, has some new information uh, about her connection to elite modeling agency. Remember John Casablancas, Trump's good friend? Trump sent his daughter, Ivanka, to go model for the elite modeling agency, John Casablancas, who married one of his 14-year-old models. All right? So that's uh, so some good content there, once again, from uh, uh, Johnny Vedmore, who also exclusively shared with me uh, his own personal uh, traumas uh, in, in his life as a child, uh, being the target of a sexual predator, and how he's now channeled that into online... Uh, uh, Investigations into locating and identifying uh, child pornography rings and, and sending that information over to the police. Had Reverend Pinkney on, he came back, good old Reverend Pinkney. It was a pleasure to have him back. You know, I tell you, I really missed, you know, the, that energy and stuff like that. Reverend Pinkney. As uh, so he comes back and shares his story with us again and uh, brings up in his life, Philip Fairbanks came on the show. He's someone I met in the Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon Facebook group. And he's coming out with a book. He says there's some of the content in the book he's going to be citing to, to my reporting and my work. Um, it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting book, book uh, called a Deep State, Unveiling the Secret U.S. Government uh, Unelected President, stuff like that. Uh, and then Dwayne Hendricks we just had on, who was the spokesperson for the Atlanta Child Murders, convicted uh, uh, Wayne Williams. And he's part of the, uh, the Wayne Williams Freedom Project. He seems to be tuned into a lot of the same stuff we are here on this show. Um, he was kind of taking it easy. He didn't want to, to, to touch all the stuff we touched today. We get on here. But uh, I really enjoyed my show with uh, my friend there, uh, Dwayne Hendricks, who, by the way, is like related to Jimi Hendrix. He just kind of mentioned that in passing. I didn't quite catch how it was. I think his, his grandfather's brother or his father's brother, which one? I, I, he wasn't quite sure what it was. 
but check out that show too. You can find it in the Spreaker archives. I have coming up. Um, years ago, here in Nevada, around 2005, 2007, 8, um, a young man was shopping in Costco, and he was a, a, a former West Point graduate, and he was carrying a, a concealed carry permit. He was carrying a concealed weapon, and one of the Costco employees saw the weapon under his, you know, his shirt hiked up, his jacket hiked up, and he saw the weapon. And he decides to call the cops and say, hey, there's a guy here with a gun. And the police decide, you know, before they even get there and even ask any questions or anything, uh, they decide to evacuate Costco. So he's evacuating with everybody else walking out. And the security guard points like, that's him, that's the guy. And the cops shoot him down in a hail of gunfire. And then immediately they start telling everyone, get out of here, get out of here, there's nothing to see here, get out of here. And all the witnesses tell them to get lost. And then... Uh, Tragically, the uh, surveillance video was, turns up missing and damaged and erased. But at the coroner's inquest, there was this couple, a doctor and his wife, who gave um, really riveting uh, testimony, eyewitness testimony, step by step, methodical, you know. And he says, I want to get everything right because this is such an important event in my life and I want to make sure I, I do, can retell it to you perfectly. And it stuck with me for years, this testimony of this couple. So anyway, I tracked them down, and they're going to come on the show. And uh, one of the things that just that just blew me away is when I was we were trying to schedule the interview, he says, oh, yes, we remember that night, because it was a miracle that we were not also shot down in that hail of bullets. There were bullets flying everywhere. So that's the Eric Scott case, who was a white guy, by the way, in um, Costco, uh, shot in Las Vegas. I've done many shows about this topic uh, with his father, Bill Scott, and some other folks who are familiar with the story. And uh, I was also involved in, in giving them some advice uh, as a digital forensic investigator on that case to what was going on. And and we had a group on Facebook, the you know friends of Eric Scott, you know, and we started to get um, harassed by the police. They made retarding us and pulling us over. They were coming into the group, cursing us out, and threatening us in, in the group. Right out there in the open. <sighs> and of course I bring this up because of the uh, uh, Floyd George case. You know? Another uh, guy yelling into the camera, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Then uh, eight minutes with a knee to his neck and until he's dead. Okay. Now, it was coincidental that I had booked this guest, you know, but it happens so often. Uh, I actually have my own I Can't Breathe case. Uh, there's one that happened in, in Las Vegas around September before I left. Uh, Byron Williams, 50 years old. He's riding his bicycle at night. The cops see him. Uh, they make contact with him because they claim that uh, he doesn't have a, a headlight on his bike, so they decide to chase him down. He makes a run for it, but he ultimately turns himself in. He's lying there prone on the ground. They jump on his back and stick their knees on his chest, and he's screaming. I think it was 14 times, 18 times, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. This is on body cam video. This is a story you don't hear about. Same thing. You don't hear about this guy, though. I can't breathe. I can't. laugh at him. Ha 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 ha. No one's gonna. He's, he's screaming for help. No one's gonna come save you. Ha 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 ha. Big joke. Um, then the cameras go off. And by the way, it was nighttime, right? The cameras go off. Suddenly, the cameras come back on. It's daytime, and there, there's an medics there trying to bring him back to life. Uh, but he died, and the, the medical examiner in Las Vegas ruled that this was a homicide due to police uh, pressure on his back there. The press in Vegas calls up uh, the prosecutor's office and says, hey, what's going on? He hangs up on the press. Okay? Now, I'd like to see some more action on that case. Like, maybe we can get that video to go viral and get some justice for this family. Now, I had the family on my show. It was the first person to interview them. 
came on my show and interviewed them, and I was able to get them legal representation too in their civil litigation against this. In fact, we, we used Keith M. Davidson, the attorney that advertises on this show, and uh, gets involved in a lot of stuff. Um, so, civilly they're taken care of, but I, we'd like to see justice in this case where the police are, are you know, held accountable for, for what's been ruled a homicide. So maybe we can get some more action on that and get that video to go viral. Byron Williams, if you could find that video and make that one go viral, because it's the same exact thing where a guy's screaming out 14 times, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Now everybody knows the original case, Eric Garner on Staten Island. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Which got that whole I can't breathe thing started. Now, Everyone knows the story of Eric Garner. But by the way, too, there's a whole backstory on that, too, because there's other, the version of the, the videotape you see of Eric Garner being murdered, um, there's a short version, but there's one that's like 15 minutes long. There's an 11 minute one, it's a 15 minute, mo minute long one. And Spike Lee has copies of all these. And I contacted Spike Lee Entertainment, tried to get them to, to turn them over to me. And, you know, they were going to, then they weren't going to, then they just stopped talking to me. But I, I've seen most of them. There's m way more than just the one or two. And there's a couple of them where you see Eric Garner lying on the ground, passed out, in, in handcuffs, handcuffed behind his back. And, you know, people say, well, you know, it's a, the, the bad training. It's improper training. We need better training of these cops. There's a supervisor right there, a, a black female sergeant right there, stepping on back and forth over his body. Okay. So it's not that they think we did bad apples and we need better training. This is what they're trained to do. That is the policy. That is the training. You know? <sighs> now, what's totally unreported in that story, and as, as a matter of fact, if you Google it now, you can only find it on the Operant Report, is Eric Garner civil rights lawsuit before police murdered him. Google that. Google Opperman, Spreaker, Eric Garner, civil rights lawsuit before police murdered him. Now, I found this by chance. I saw an actual copy of his handwritten civil rights complaint. What happened was years earlier, he was arrested again in that neighborhood, right? And he was uh, sent to Rikers Island. And when he was in Rikers Island, he did a handwritten civil rights complaint against the Staten Island Police Department. And in it, he describes, you know, and very, and I read the whole thing in that show, Eric Garner's civil rights lawsuit before police murdered him. Okay? I read the whole thing. And it's now it's totally scrubbed from the internet, but, but at the time, uh, it was up there for a while on StatenIslandLive.com. It's since been taken down. And he talks about how he was walking down the street in that same neighborhood. And certain officers who he's had problems with in the past pull him over and stop him. And they search him. And then they decide what they want to do is they wanna, they're going to give him a cavity search. So in the middle of the street, they strip search him. And then they stick their fingers digitally into his anus. And he describes how he was traumatized by this. And he told him, hey, if you want to do this to me, I'll go back to the precinct. Can we just do this in private? And he says he, he felt that he, he was... Uh, he lost his manhood in front of the whole neighborhood by the cops sticking their fingers uh, into his rectum, okay? And that's why you see when the cops show up there, he says, no, 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 no. this ends today. This ends today because there's a whole previous uh, uh, harassment of this guy by those cops in that neighborhood, and they got away with this totally. In fact, they even arrested the guy, who, one of the guys who took the video got arrested, the one who first leaked the first one. Eric Garner, I can't breathe. Hey, let me see. Here. But but really, I'd like you to, to try to um, uh, locate the video of Byron Williams in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you can Google Byron Williams, Keith M. Davidson, and you can find that case there. And hopefully... Uh, make that case go viral so and everything we see here going on with this case here and now the people are suddenly upset to see people uh, getting choked out and 
and murdered in cold blood, you know, maybe that this time, you know, we'll see some action and, and this kind of stuff. And people are so fed up with all this quarantine and stuff like that. It's just going to bubble over. I'm going to take a break early, okay? And when we come back, I'm going to tell you the story of the Millers. Another unreported story that has connections to all kinds of stuff. Again, another police, this time it's a civilian shooting the police, uh, but a cover-up back in Las Vegas. Connections to Bundy Ranch, connections to uh, Occupy Wall Street, to the Million Mask March, and all kinds of suspicious activity that went on with this Jared and Amanda Miller. We'll be right back after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. They've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Tina Helmuth is writing an ongoing series of fact fiction books that boldly takes on today's most heinous crimes. Suffer the Little Children, The Wrath of the Father, and Unbreakable. Deeply researched and mixed with the supernatural, good versus evil makes these thrillers hard to put down. Available at lulu.com in paperback or ebook. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. And uh, don't forget, if you like the show, check out OppermanReport.com. That's where we have our member section. And also, too, our archives are at Spreaker.com. And if you need to hire me, you can go to EmailReviewer.com. Or you can email me at OppermanInvestigations at gmail.com. Want to advertise on the show? Opperman Report at gmail.com. By the way, too, when you advertise on the show, you gotta, I'll give you an interview, too. I'll interview for like a half hour, and we'll put your banner on the website and stuff like that, and I'll help you get the likes 
uh, and traffic to your social media. It's a it's a really good value. It's it's like peanuts, you know, to, to advertise in this show. And then you get huge. You got to see all my emails that you know in a day. It's insane. <laughs> I'm getting so right now as we try to do the show. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. In 2014, in Las Vegas, Nevada, this couple. Okay, Jared and Amanda Miller. Now, here's how the official story goes. <sighs> One day, there's a report on the news that Jared and Amanda, they were staying in a motel, extended stay motel in uh, uh, North Las Vegas. And they decided one day to, sh to fill up a shopping cart with guns and a flag and all kinds of material. And they pushed that shopping cart three miles in the Nevada heat. It happened in June, June 8th. The two of them, uh, they decided to push a shopping cart for three miles. They go to a CC's Pizza, right? And in, just luckily, in that CC's Pizza, they happen to see two cops sitting there eating their pizza. And somehow, Jared's able to uh, shoot one cop in the back of the head and then get the other cop too. They, they got the jump on two Las Vegas cops. Okay, and, and if you read the news, these guys are shooting everybody down left and right. But somehow these two got the got the jump on these two cops. Then they push their shopping cart once again across the street to a Walmart, and they come in, they shoot a gun in the air, and they scream, "The revolution has just started! We're starting the revolution!" Right? And then the story goes that this other gentleman who had a concealed carry permit um, draws his weapon on Jared, and he doesn't see that Amanda's right behind Je uh, behind him, and Amanda shoots this guy and kills him. Then the story goes that they committed suicide, the two of them. And then they, you know, they start showing some videos on TV, and all these grainy the videos look like the moon landing. Okay, now. All of us, when, when we walk into Walmart and you look up at that TV screen when you're walking in, that's pretty good, damn good, high-quality video. But somehow, this Walmart didn't have that. They had moon landing video, okay? It was like dark and black and white. So who are these Millers? Well, what's the story of these Millers? Why would they do this? Why would they declare um, revolution starting? Why would they shoot these cops? So the news media, the local Las Vegas news media, Starts looking into them, and they find some YouTube videos of these guys uh, up at Bundy Ranch. And up at Bundy Ranch, uh, and it shows them two dressed up. He's dressed up as the Joker, and she's uh, dressed up as Harlequin. Because what they used to do was, they had their employment at that point, where they were street performers down on Fremont Street taking pictures with tourists. And that's how they would earn their living. By the way, I know all about that. You can't earn a living doing that and, and survive in Las Vegas. If that's the only thing you're doing, you can make some extra money. If you got a, a social security disability check and you're out there hustling, doing that too, you can make money doing that. If you're also a prostitute and stripping, selling drugs, then you could do that. But to just do that alone, you can't live in the cheapest flea bag motel in Las Vegas just being a street performer. Just the money's not there. Okay? And, and I know this because, first of all, I know people doing it. But I also know the guy, and I know about the guy who does this thing where he rents, he finds poor, <laughs> poor people in trouble, try to eat out a living, and he tells them, listen, I'll rent you a, a suit, a Mickey Mouse suit, I'll rent you a, a pirate suit here, and you go there, and then when he, he makes them pay rent, and then he stands there watching, and as soon as someone gives him a tip, he runs over and gets his cut of the tip, okay, this guy, you know, this, is a, a, this is an insane world going on down there, okay, but I know the whole thing because I have other things going on that I know about. Okay. So who are the who are they? they? Well, they're street performers, and they're up at Bundy Ranch. And in one of the interviews on YouTube, when they're up at Bundy Ranch, they're wearing a T-shirt that says "Elect." Um. Oh, I forget his first name. Uh, Vanderbeek is the guy's last name. Lori Vanderbeek. I forget his first name. For Senate. No, for governor. No, he was running for governor. Vanderbilt was running for governor. Okay. On that same party that uh, Jesse Ventura runs under. So I see that, and we find out that the story then in the news is that the reason why these two came to Nevada 
was to support the Vanderbeek, David Lori Vanderbeek, was to support the campaign of David Lori Vanderbeek for governor. Okay. Now, I know David Lori Vanderbeek. Uh, I'm the campaign manager for that party here in Nevada, uh, there in Nevada. And, uh, th- and also Gordon Martinez, who had previously been a guest on our show, uh, because previous to that, about a year earlier than that, maybe it was two years earlier than that, probably was two years earlier, I was asked to host and moderate the governor's debate and the sheriff's debate. Okay. And Gordon Martinez was running for sheriff, and David Laurie Vanderbeek was running for governor. The Governor Sandoval didn't show up to this debate. It was held at a, a small venue, but there were TV cameras there. You know, the news covered it. Um, the local TV news covered it. And um, for the sheriff's debate, the current sheriff did show up. Lombardo was there for that. So I met everybody running for sheriff. I met everybody running for governor. Sislak was running back to the current governor was there, okay? And it's a kind of funny side story, too. The night before, I had interviewed uh, um, Frank Collada, who was the guy in that movie, Casino, that he was a partner with uh, Tony Vance, Spalatro, and the hitman for him and stuff like that, and he skated on all the charges, and Tony Vance got killed, and you know, <laughs> that was good, good, you know? Anyway, so I interviewed him the night before, so I was all excited about this when I went to the, either I think it was a sheriff's debate, when I went down to the sheriff's debate, I said, hey, Interview Frank Collado last night. And everybody said, oh, yeah, I know Frank Collado. Oh, man, I know Frank Collado. Everybody knows Frank Collado over there in Vegas to this day, the guy that uh, got away with uh, quite a bit. So I contact, I do some shows with um, Gordon Martinez, who knew these Millers, and also with um, David Laurie Vanderbeek, who knew the Millers, because they, they came here to Vegas to volunteer for his campaign. And he says, you know, they were uh, they were out of control. We got rid of them. Okay. But this was a hot story, a hot news story, and I knew everybody involved. Okay. So I started doing radio shows about it. And it's curious to me that at the time, uh, Revolution Radio, I was doing a show on Revolution Radio on Friday nights, and the owner of the station was all hot and heavy into this Bundy Ranch stuff, promoting what was going on over at Bundy Ranch. And here I had these people who just shot a cop, and they were, they came to Nevada. They were staying at Bundy Ranch until they got kicked out. And I, you know, I said, hey, I'm, I'm doing a special report. All you got to do is flip the switch for me and let me broadcast. He goes, no, 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 I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed early tonight. I don't want to broadcast the show tonight, Ed. All right. John B. Wells had me on his show you know, to, to talk about this. He did a special broadcast covering his story. I went on there with uh, Vanderbeek and uh, Gordon Martinez. <coughs> so as we start looking into this further, it turns out that these Millers, Jared and Amanda, the story is, when you start looking into uh, Jared's criminal history, all right, one of the things I do as a private investigator is if you have a big criminal case, cons- drug conspiracy case and stuff like that, organized crime type case. You know, you got a bunch of co-defendants, you know, some people are making deals, some people aren't making deals. Or you want to find out, hey, who was the informant that got my client into this jackpot? Who started this ball rolling and caused all these problems? So through my experience, my lifetime experience on these kind of cases, you can kind of look at someone's criminal history and how their cases went, what went on, the charges they were charged with, what the disposition of the case was, and you can kind of tell me that this guy made a deal. He obviously made a deal somewhere along the lines. Now, Jared Miller is an interesting guy because way back in 2001, okay, he, he was he was uh, had a charge, okay, uh, multiple offenses in, in Washington and Indiana, and then in 2007 he was. Um, uh, sentenced to a diversion program, okay, on a criminal reckless charge, and in 2009, he was arrested uh, and charged with battery, and they dropped those charges, and then again, felony drug charges, 
Okay, and he got two years probation and drug counseling for that. So this guy's got several, from 2001 to 2014, several cases that he did no jail time whatsoever for. Felonies that he did no jail time whatsoever for. Violent crimes that he did no jail time whatsoever for. So right away, that's a sign. They got to this guy. So what's the true story with these guys? Okay. They sold all their possessions, and they went to go. First, they went to the uh, Occupy Wall Street, and they were down there at Occupy Wall Street, which most people believe is a leftist protest. Then after that, they went to the Million Mask March, and they were involved in that. Then they came out here supposedly to follow the campaign, a, a, le- a legit mainstream campaign, a guy running for governor. But then when that falls out, then they wind up going to uh, Bundy Ranch. Now, get this. It's these two characters, Jared and Amanda, that started the rumor about uh, the drone strike, that there was going to be a drone strike up at Bundy Ranch. And that's what caused the whole big kerfuffle between the, the three percenters and the Oath Keepers where they're pulling guns on each other and all stuff like that. And uh, they were also involved with one of these cop watch groups, right? And there was another strange thing up there at Bundy Ranch where when uh, a guy I had on this show that I no longer trust uh, was up there at Bundy Ranch. He just happened to be filming when the cops took down and made some arrests up there. Very suspicious to me, all these different things, Okay. Now, these guys, they're up there. They're the ones who start the whole rumor that, hey, that we're about to be invaded with a drone invasion up here and a drone strike against us. Causes all this controversy and dissension up there with these guys. I did another show after this with Trevor Aronson where he, he um, the, the FBI was running a game up there where they, uh, they were acting as if they were a documentary film crew and filming people, interviewing people, and doing stuff like that to make cases against people. And what Trevor Aronson discovered was that most of the people up there were all different kinds of informants and undercover agents, and all those. it was a cesspool of these kind of guys. So the theory is, oh, by the way, too, and then it turns out, okay, that the Las Vegas Metro Police Department does a press conference where they say, well, no, 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 we got it wrong the first time. And it wasn't that it was a suicide in there. That what really happened was, is uh, Jared shot, no, Jared got killed in a shootout, and then Amanda shot herself. So now it's no longer a, a, a suicide, it's a shootout. But they're still claiming that this guy, the bystander with the concealed carry permit, was shot by Jared. Oh, no, it was shot by Amanda. Now, I believe part of the cover-up in that case was that the cops, it was the cops, this guy got shot by flint friendly fire, it was the cops who shot this guy. And that's where the cover-up started, and that's why everything went to hell. Because so much went on around my life, and even John B. Wells' life, okay, around that period of time, uh, that there's no doubt in my mind that there was a big, major police cover-up, too. Also, too, you know how when a couple of cops get shot, they have uh, funerals and church services all week long, you know, talking to everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's on the news constantly? This came and went. It's, it's, it left as quick as it came. Another bizarre thing, too, the whole, the whole story was over in a, in a week, and they didn't even have like those interviews with the family and stuff like that. Five years later, they did have some interviews with family members, but it was always extended family members. It wasn't like direct like husbands and wives, parents and stuff like that. It was like these bizarre you know, extended family people that came forward and, and cooperated with the media. Another really weird thing about this, okay, by the way, too, I found that exclusively that the Millers were involved in the uh, uh, as informants in cases going on there at their, that motel, their domestic violence cases and petty drug cases, that they were directly informants on those kind of cases. They were listed as witnesses. Another really weird thing that happened was that um, when they got into the Walmart, <laughs> almost immediately, the police were able to get to the back of that mall, Walmart with an armored vehicle and block and put park the car up against the door so they couldn't get out the back door, like somehow they were able to get this. Arm, how many of those armored vehicles do they have in Las Vegas? And they're going to get it all the way over there. Got to take at least twenty minutes, right? But they were able to get it there before they could even escape the building. Very very bizarre. 
there had to be something going on here where the Millers knew that these two cops were going to be at that pizza place and that the cops were comfortable enough to deal with the Millers that, you know, that they, they got the jump on them in such a way. Because otherwise it just makes no sense. Especially, if you know, if you were just sitting, just a couple of regular guys, if I was just sitting in a CC's pizza, I'm eating my pizza, and two guys come in all sweaty and hot, pushing a shopping cart full of guns, you know, you're going to kind of notice this, man, you know, and, and be on guard, you know? But somehow they got the drop on these two Las Vegas cops that are shooting down everything that moves. So, these guys, these Millers, right, very shady background. Typical COINTELPRO type guys were uh, mixing in and mingling in with both um, left organizations and right organizations. When you go to the, the, the Wikipedia page about this, they call them sovereign citizens. That these were the, they were part of the sovereign movement. doesn't mention anything about uh, Occupy Wall Street or uh, um, Million Mask March. Nothing. talks about the Bundys and being up there with the Bundys. doesn't mention them that they were the source of the, the drone attack at the Bundys. By the way, you know who was part of that thing with the drone attack, too? That guy, um, they call him Screwy Louie. There was a veterans on patrol that came out with that thing about the pedal camp and uh, with the underground Doug pedal camp over there in Tucson. That whole wacky story there, man, that Craig story got involved in. So he was also involved in that standoff with the drone strike and all that nonsense, too, man, up there at Bundy Ranch. So a totally unreported story that you won't hear anywhere else but the opera report. And even alt-media tried to silence this story, okay, by not allowing me to broadcast it there. But it's out there. You can do some uh, Google searches on the Millers, Ed Opperman, and stuff will come up. You will be able to find it. Let's see. And we got all that going on there. Um, I can't think if there's anything else I want to tell you about the Bundys. So. I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, really, uh, exhausting. You know, dealing with all this stuff and trying to get it out there and reporting. And, you know, they got a pretty big reach, man. And uh, people just, they don't care. They, they, they're more excited by hearing stuff that's just made up and and uh, or, or just stuff that's on YouTube by people that aren't really involved in the story or the case or anything. Rather than hearing accurate firsthand information, you know, it's like beating my head against the wall. And if you had any kind of idea, all the harassment, and stalking, and hacking, and all the bull crap I got to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And I told you a story this week about the, I met that the woman, you know, who was like singing these praise and worship songs, and we were so motivated and so uh, blessed, you know, by that conversation. And, uh, you know, all week long, I've just been thinking of uh, other times in my life where God just moved in my life and and blessed me and put people's path in, in my path, you know, to support me or encourage me, you know, um, and confirm my faith. And I just, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm getting that uh, with, from this, <laughs> you know, from, like, the work I'm doing here. I don't see a, a lot of... Uh, blessings or, you know, or, or feelings of accomplishment and, you know, and chills, you know, like uh, some of the stuff we were talking about. So anyway, I'm going to cut the show short, okay, it's a, just a Friday night solo show, uh, but check out that show about um, Eric Garner, civil lawsuit uh, before cops murdered him. Uh, where I read the whole thing, you know, and keep your eye out too for the Eric Scott show, um, where um, we talk about the murder, the, when the witnesses who witnessed the, the shooting down of Eric Scott. You know, I, I've, I've talked about on the show a couple times too about the, the ice cream truck lady who was shot in Las Vegas. Um, you know, uh, the, you're, you're, for the first time, we used to go to this 
water park in Victoria. And when she was still in kindergarten and preschool and stuff like that, I'd pick her up from school. And I'd surprise her. I'd have, you know, her lunch packed or a dinner packed and her bathing suit, you know, a cooler and stuff like that and her blankets. We used to use this big sleeping bag. And instead of driving home, I'd say, hey, guess where we're going? She said, where are we going? We're going to the water park. She said, well, which one? <laughs> you know, because we used to go to so many of them. And uh, so this this couple, I think they were Armenian or something like that, Yugoslavian. They didn't speak English, no first language. And he had a, they were in the 60s, you know, and he had an ice cream truck and she had an ice cream truck. And they'd drive around. And we'd see them all over different parks. You know, it's a small town. So, you know, normally, you know, you, you go and you get online and you get the ice cream and give it to your kid. But the, the, your kid starts at a certain age where, hey, they want to go online and, and give the ice cream truck lady their dollar to get their ice cream. So I remember the first time I ever went to tour and do this. It was this woman, this ice cream truck lady. And she got online, she gave the money, you know, and, and you know, you supposed to get the change, what's going on here? <laughs> do I know what I want? You know, it's an exciting moment for a kid. Anyway. Poor little ice cream truck lady was about 90 pounds, 85 pounds. Tiny woman. And her husband was a tiny guy, too. And what happened was the husband got pulled over by the cops, and he had a bad registration on the car. So they gave him a ticket. And then later on that same day, they pulled him over again, and they gave him another ticket. And he says, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I already have a ticket. I said, this is, this is wrong. I have a ticket. I'm going to go pay the ticket. I'm going to get the car registered. And you don't have to give me two tickets. That's crazy. <laughs> I already have a ticket. Look, here's the ticket. They're from a foreign country. They don't understand. So he calls his wife on the cell phone. She says, come here and explain to these cops. I already have a ticket. So the wife goes, and she's trying to explain to the cops in her broken English. right? And um, at one point, she's actually down on her knees pleading with these cops, saying, please, 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 you have to stop giving us these tickets. I would rather be dead than have to than to keep getting these tickets. And she gestured with a little knife, you know, that I was cutting her wrist. I would rather be dead. I would rather be dead than, than to have these tickets. So the cops freak out and they shoot her dead. Okay. And there was a whole line of cars there to witness the whole thing. And everyone said this woman was no threat to anybody. Nothing happened to these cops. So, and uh, it just happened, too, that Victoria's first boyfriend lived right around the corner where that happened. And, you know, the scene there was all night long. They had everything taped off for, you know, for 12 hours, 16 hours. And uh, he kept asking his parents, well, why did they kill the, the ice cream truck lady? Why did they kill the ice cream truck lady? What do you tell you, kid? You know? So that's our experience with the Victoria's fi- first trip alone to the ice cream truck. All right, guys, thank you so much. Good night. And now a word from our sponsors. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers. I've dealt with thousands of law firms. And I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833 for KMD Law. That's 833 4 KMD Law. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll free 833 4 KMD Law. If you're in for the fight of your life, Stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. 
PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with Pure Soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Are you ready to change your life? But don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. Aquadam.net. Give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. Uh, You're left with the mess to clean up, having to deal with the insurance company, uh, not to mention the memories that are lost that you can never replace. Uh, To those who live in flood-prone and hurricane-prone areas, uh, which is just around the corner, prepare now. Hurricane season is right around the corner. Visit Aquadam.net to see how they can help you prepare to avoid flood damage this season and every season thereafter. An Aquadam can be another tool in your arsenal uh, to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. A Cofferdam, using water to control water, that can protect your home, your business, your church, your neighborhood, like a dam, but without the beavers. Give Aquadam a call at 707-764-2119, 707-764-2119, or look them up online at Aquadam.net. Uh, they're also on Facebook at Aquadam Inc., or call or email them today. They can help you out. Give them a call. Uh, tell them Opperman Report sent you. Opperman Report, that's 10% off the price to anyone who mentions the Opperman Report. Tina Helmuth is writing an ongoing series of fact fiction books that boldly takes on today's most heinous crimes. Suffer the Little Children, The Wrath of the Father, and Unbreakable. Deeply researched and mixed with the supernatural, good versus evil makes these thrillers hard to put down. Available at lulu.com in paperback or ebook.